To pull off this stunt with no strings attached in the new Mission Impossible movie, Tom Cruise practiced by doing 13,000 motocross jumps and 500 skydives. He jumped out of a plane 100 times before becoming the first actor to be filmed performing a halo jump for the sixth movie in the franchise. And nailing this stunt on the side of the Burj Khalifa in Dubai for the fourth film required 200 hours of rehearsal. These are the lengths the Cruise has to go to consistently raise the bar of what Ethan Hunt can achieve in the Mission Impossible franchise. Here's how Tom Cruise pulled off 12 of the most dangerous Mission Impossible stunts. In Dead Reckoning Part 1, Ethan Hunt fights on top of a moving train, but because it would careen off of a cliff at the end of the sequence, the crew had trouble finding an actual train for the shoot. So instead, they built their own steam locomotive from scratch. The train ran along a 25-mile-long train track at speeds of up to 60 miles per hour. The crew also constructed these flatbed carriages, equipped with techno cranes that could shoot over the roof. But the shots of Cruz and actor Asai Morales duking it out on the top and side of the train had to be captured handheld by this camera operator. But don't worry, when it came time for the train to drop off a 200-foot cliff, the actors watched from the side. Cruz worked 16 hours a day to hone his helicopter flying skills for this aerial chase in Fallout. While he had flown helicopters before, Cruz took 2,000 hours of flight school to learn some new maneuvers. For example, this corkscrew turn. To complete the 360-degree move on camera, Cruz first started with a descent, then rolled into a turn, and then held that turn as he went down. Keep in mind that Cruz had to stay in character and never take his hands off the controls. Perhaps the scariest of all was just jumping onto the helicopter. When my foot touches the skid, I'm gonna, I'll drop back like this. According to stunt coordinator Wade Eastwood, several of the film's co-stars had no idea this 40-foot plummet was actually intentional. According to director Christopher McQuarrie, this scene from Dead Reckoning Part 1 where Ethan Hunt rides a motorcycle off a cliff and then base jumps 4,000 feet was the most dangerous he and Cruz had ever filmed doing this franchise. But thanks to a year of training in several disciplines and planning down to the precise measurement, the duo made movie history. Cruz prepared for his motorcycle trick by doing over 13,000 motocross jumps. For the base jump, he got himself comfortable by doing 30 jumps a day adding up to 500 skydives by the time he was ready to shoot. In the final scene, Cruz jumps off a cliff. In reality, Cruz hopped a 443-foot-long, 35-foot-high ramp built on the side of the mountain. At just 10 feet wide, there was very little room for error. So before flying the ramp piece by piece to Norway, the crew built a replica of the ramp in a quarry in England, where Cruz could practice the stunt over and over. At the same time, McQuarrie used digital ramp models of varying degrees to nail Cruz's trajectory. While Cruz and the bike were attached to separate cables during rehearsals, that was not the case during the final shot. The key to riding the bike off the ramp and then separating from it? According to Cruz, leaning out and cupping his chest helped give him enough lift. He then had just six seconds to deploy his parachute. Cruz felt satisfied with his work after completing the jump six times. According to McQuarrie, Rome is a tough city to film in because of its many traffic-clogged and cobblestone streets. So of course, the Dead Reckoning Part 1 crew thought it was the perfect place to shoot a car chase. The cobblestone made it especially hard for Cruz to drift while behind the wheel. To add another obstacle on top of that, Cruz was handcuffed to co-star Haley Atwell. You're driving. Meaning he would have to drive one-handed. The key is, don't crash. As Atwell and Cruz took turns at the wheel, they also had a narrow field of vision thanks to the cameras attached to the front of the car. During the chase, they switched from a BMW to a tiny Fiat 500, which the crew built from scratch, fitting it with an electric motor so the car could race like this. Five years earlier, in Fallout, the franchise took Hunt to the streets of Paris, where he'd have to switch between a car and a motorcycle. Like in Rome, Paris's slippery cobblestone streets posed a safety risk for the motorcycle stunts. 
as the actor would be speeding up to 100 miles per hour with no helmet on. To give crews more control over the bike, the crew would change out the tires on cold days, allowing them to stick better to the road. It wasn't just the cobblestone that was tricky. In this shot, crews had to drive a car backwards off a five-foot staircase. Here, the crew was given just one hour to shoot around the iconic Arc de Triomphe. Crews had to ride his bike against traffic. That required four lanes of stunt drivers and perfect timing between crews and the stunt performers so they wouldn't collide. Dead Reckoning added a new skill to Ethan Hunt's resume, speed flying. Unlike skydiving, speed flying is just a few feet off the ground and involves a much smaller canopy. Even a slight gust of wind can knock you off course. Crews prepared for this stunt for three years, training on a variety of different terrains. Perhaps even trickier than performing the stunt, filming it properly. While most aerial stunts can be shot from a helicopter or drone, those methods couldn't get close enough to the actor. So instead, the crew built a gimbal rig with two cameras on either side worn by a camera operator flying alongside crews. The cameras themselves were controlled from a helicopter high above the action, while the gimbal itself could tilt and maneuver the rocky path. After spiraling in the air, crews would have to land at 50 miles per hour in front of this camera vehicle. Thanks to all those years of training, crews hit his mark precisely. The fifth mission film kicked off with crews clinging to an Airbus A400M mid-flight. To keep him from being ripped away while at 1,000 feet in the air, Cruz was attached to a wire connected to the plane's door, which was erased in post-production. While he was safely attached, the plane would be flying at 100 knots. Any gusts of wind and flying debris posed a huge risk, so Cruz wore these special contact lenses that kept his eyes protected during the stunt. Cruz was in the air for six to eight minutes at a time. In the end, Cruz went for this wild ride eight times before they got the right take. In the fourth mission installment, Cruz scaled the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, which stands at an intimidating 2,717 feet tall. It wasn't just about swinging around 1,700 feet in the air, but making falling look like an accident. What you're actually witnessing is a carefully executed Australian rappel, a move that required Cruz to run four stories down the height of the building. To prepare to climb the world's tallest building, Crews trained by climbing a glass wall. A set of hot lights shining at the wall helped to replicate the building's scorching surface temperature. The film's stunt coordinator says Crews clocked an estimated 200 hours of rehearsal time. When it was time to shoot the actual scene, the skyscraper needed some retrofitting. In order to attach Crews's harness at certain strategic points, the crew had to break 26 windows. In this sequence, Ethan Hunt has to sneak into a building undetected, so Cruz learned how to do a halo jump, which stands for high altitude, low opening. Cruz would have to jump out of a plane from 25,000 feet, but he couldn't open up his parachute until he was below 2,000 feet in the air. Cruz started training for the high elevation jump in a wind tunnel on set before jumping out of a plane for real. Stunt coordinator Wade Eastwood estimated that Cruz jumped out of a plane 100 times before he was ready to be the first actor to do a halo jump on camera. Jumping from 25,000 feet carries the risk of decompression sickness, so Cruz had to wear a helmet. In order for the audience to see Cruz's face from behind the visor, the crew built this helmet with a light in it. And this trained stunt cameraman also jumped out of the plane with Cruz. Once the two of them hit 20,000 feet in the air, Cruz had to position himself so he was exactly three feet away from the camera. Cruz has spent a lot of his career in the air, but for Rogue Nation, he would have to perform long takes of tiring action underwater. So he got some help from the military. More specifically, he and co-star Rebecca Ferguson trained using a military program for breath holds. These breathing exercises train the actors to slow their heart rate and therefore use less oxygen. Takes lasted anywhere between four and six minutes. On top of that, Cruz would still have to hold his breath, wait for any bubbles to clear from the shot, and the crew to take their positions before the stunt could actually start shooting. For this, 
Cruise broke the record for longest underwater breath hold on a feature film, clocking in at six minutes. That record would be broken by Kate Winslet, who held her breath for seven minutes and 14 seconds on the set of Avatar The Way of Water. Mission Impossible 2 opens with Ethan Hunt free solo climbing Dead Horse Point in Utah from 2,000 feet high. Professional climber Ron Koch gave Cruz a crash course in rock climbing. Koch was originally supposed to do a majority of the climbing on camera, but according to stunt coordinator Brian Smurs, the actor ended up doing all of it himself. Like this iron cross where he had to hold on to the edge of the cliff with one hand and then swing himself around so he could grab on with both hands and face outwards. Or here, where Cruz really was jumping 15 feet from one part of the cliff to another. For this whole opening sequence, there was no safety net under Cruz to catch him if he fell, though he did wear a harness attached to a very thin cable. It wasn't just the climbing that posed a challenge for Cruz. Director John Woo set up five cameras on top of the cliff to film the stunt, but none of them could get close enough to get a close-up of Cruz. So instead, Wu used a helicopter with a camera on its nose to get the close-up. According to the director, the chopper got so close to Cruz that the blade was moving his hair in the wind. Cruz has shot car chases on streets of cities all around the world. But what made filming Venice different was planning action in a city famous for canals and narrow alleyways. For starters, the crew had to bring in all of their equipment by boat. On top of that, the sequence takes place entirely at night, and they shot in the cold winter. Instead of cars and motorcycles, it became a chase by foot. While this might have made it a challenge for the cast to find their way around the maze-like streets, the city's narrow corridors were the perfect setting for the fighting with each actor trained in a different fighting style, and it became a whole new place for Cruz to show off his signature sprint, because it wouldn't be a Mission Impossible film without it. <laughs>